Clyde Beatty Show. <laughs> the world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with another exciting story from his brilliant career. This master of the big cats captures ferocious jungle beasts and trains them to perform under the big top in the circus, where there are always thrills, action, and danger. Hundreds of dramatic behind-the-scenes adventures are all part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here is the story of Brush with Death. Ladies and gentlemen, calling your attention to the center arena and presenting the great attack owners, the one, the only, the death-defying master of the big cast, Clyde Beatty! Okay, Hank, turn the cats loose. All right, Mr. Beatty. You better keep an eye on that new lion in Sheba. Old Nero took a shine to him. <laughs> the old boy's getting romantic notions, huh? Yeah, he's been putting the muscle on any of the cat gets nearer. You better watch him. That sounds like an item for the gossip column. Come on, let's get this show started. All right. Hey, you, Nero, come on. Get out of that chute. Caesar, Nero, break it up! Break it up! What's the trouble? Caesar, Nero, fighting that chute, Mrs. Beatty. They're jamming up the works. Hey, get those cats into the arena. I'm trying, boss. Now, here they come. What's the matter with Nero, Hank? He hasn't acted like that for a long time. It's that young lioness. He's showing off for us. Oh, I see. Love has come to the king of the beast. Yeah, I don't like it, Miss Beatty. That old boy's in an ugly mood. He ain't gonna let nothing near that she-cat. Look, he just smacked Caesar off his pedestal. Oh, back there. Up, Caesar. Up. Nero's got his eyes glued on the lioness. Oh, that jealous old thing. He's making a fool of himself. Yeah, and he'll make hash out of anything that gets Nero. I hope Clyde doesn't try to get in between them. Well, he has to. It's part of the routine. You mean he... Remember this next trick? Sheba got across in front of the boss to get in that other pedestal. Down, Sheba, down. Over here now. Over here. Over. Oh, Nero, don't like it. He's crouching on his pedestal. He's going to leap. Clyde! <laughs> Now, back to Brush with Death. Clyde! Clyde, are you all right? He's all right, Mrs. Beatty. Nero just nicked his leg. His pants are torn. He's bleeding. Clyde, come out of there. You're hurt. I'm all right, Justice Grant. Thank you. shouldn't Just stay in there. Ma'am, it's safer for him to finish the routine. If he don't, the cats get all fouled up. We'll have a mess up there. Oh, I wish this was over. I wish he'd let those animals out. That could be over in a minute. I'll get ready to open the chute. Now, just lie still a minute, Clyde. This may sting a bit. Ooh, hey. What are you trying to do, Doc? That's a deep and nasty scratch, Clyde. I've got to be sure it's cleaned out properly. Well, you don't have to use cleaning solvent or whatever that stuff is. Oh, Clyde, how can you keep your sense of humor? My gosh, Harriet, it's just a little nick. But Doc's making a real production out of it. Clyde, behave yourself. That little nick, Mr. Lion Tamer, is going to have about 15 stitches in it before I'm through. Oh, great. This circus is rapidly turning into an old lady's quilting society. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sawbones, get on with your hem stitching. Well, a couple of shots of Novocaine. Oh, oh. Quit jabbing me with that thing, will you? What color thread do you want, Clyde? Red, white, or blue? <clears throat> Mix them up. I'm patriotic. Well, wait a minute till that stuff takes hold. Uh, bet you'd put on a real show for something serious, like trimming a hangnail. I'll get you sewed up, give you your usual shot of antitetanus, then Harriet can tuck you into bed for a few days, and you'll be as good as new. In bed for a few days? Are you crazy? In a few hours, that leg will be as stiff as a board. Sure, if I stay in bed, it will. You stay in bed. Nonsense. You heard the doctor, Clark. I will not stay in bed, and also I will not miss this evening's show. <laughs> now, this evening, you won't even be able to walk. Would you care to bet? What are you trying to prove, Clyde? Nothing, not a thing. Then stop acting like a child. I won't allow you in that arena for at least four days. Four days? Listen, Aerosmith, do you know how much it costs to run a circus? I'm not a circus physician for nothing. It costs tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, and it costs just the same even when we don't give a performance. Are you the only attraction with this circus? Listen, with this turn of cold weather, we've had to pull every stunt in the book to get crowds. Leave out my act with the big cats and we'll have more empty seats than our leopards have spots. You try dodging those cats on that gimpy leg and your show will wind up with an empty saddle in the old corral. Look, there's only two weeks left of the tour. We've got to take in every nickel we can. I'm serious, Clyde. 
You'd be taking a foolish risk to do an act as dangerous as yours. That leg's sure to be stiff and painful. I appreciate your concern, Doc, and you're probably right. But if I can stand up tonight, the show goes on. Just a moment. Well, Harriet, is something wrong? Yes, Doctor, it's Clyde. He's pacing up and down his room, exercising that leg to keep it from getting stiff. Oh, that baby. Well, don't worry, Harriet. He won't be on his feet long. Oh, you don't know my man. Don't tell Clyde, but along with his pills, I fed him a sedative. He'll soon be sleeping like a baby. Oh, good. Well, let's go have a look. Well, it's a couple of hours before the evening show. I'm glad he'll be asleep by then. He will be. I slept him one nice little dose. If I can get him to lie down, he'll be sure to doze off. Clyde's the most stubborn man I've ever known. Now, Harriet... You know you don't believe that. But he just won't listen to reason. Why, I've seen him go into that arena with cuts and bruises that would put most men in the hospital. Clyde Beatty isn't like most men. <sighs> That's for sure. But he doesn't do those things merely for heroics. He's too smart for that. Mm, I know. It's just that he's so wrapped up in his circus. He feels responsible for everyone who works with us. He never wants to let anyone down. Well, here's the trailer. It sounds kind of quiet in there. Maybe he's asleep. Let's see. He's sound asleep, Doctor. Good. The rest will do him good. Oh, that's a load off my mind. You won't wake up for hours. Probably sleep right through the night. Oh, I hope so. Well, I've got a job to do. You mean to call off the performance? Why, Doctor, don't you know? The show must go on. <laughs> I forgot. You're also one of that strange breed called show people. Right. And if there are five customers of 5,000... They're going to see the best show I can scrape together. Harriet? Harriet, are you here? What time is it? Oh, Ooh. that leg. Stiff as a plank. Shouldn't have gone to sleep. Where's that darn clock? Oh. Harriet, where are you? Isn't that the performance music? I'm going to be late for my act. Got to get out there fast. What act's on up there? Well, Mr. Beatty, what are you doing here? Never mind. Where's Mrs. Beatty? She just finished a turn with Frimba and Anna May. She's back in the dressing tent going over a fill-in dancing act with some of the girls. A fill-in for what? A fill-in for your act with the big cats, of course. Nonsense. This crowd wants to see animals, not dancers. Well, the boys are tearing down the steel arena. Crowd knows you ain't going on. Hank, stop the boys. Have them put that cage back together. Boss, you can't go on. Do what you're told. Then get those cats out there. <laughs> Over here, Miss Betty. What's Mr. Beatty doing in there? He's in no condition to do his act. I tried to stop him, ma'am. He wouldn't listen. Send someone to the doctor at once. Yeah, that isn't necessary. I heard them announce Clyde's act. That man's crazy to go in there like this. Oh, doctor, we've got to stop him. It's bad enough of that leg, but it was a sedative I gave him. It's sure to slow up his reactions. Oh, the boss is working. He's working in slow motion. Chief Bassi's almost packed him. Hey, can't you get those cats out of the arena? Can't. They won't come out till I finish the routine and the boss chews them out. Oh, look at Nero. He's acting up again. He's watching Sheba. Mr. Beatty's between them. Clyde, look out! Oh, God! 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 Oh, That other forceps, quickly. Now, sponge. Another. Another. Yes, Doctor. Can't stop the blood. Artery severed. Got to find the end. Field's obscured. More pressure on the tourniquet. Enough? There. Now, clamp. Good. Guess that's all I can do for the moment. 
Doctor. Don't come in, Harriet. I've got the report on the blood donor. Afraid this isn't very pretty. How, how is he? Clive's lost a lot of blood. Too much blood. Will he be all right? Suffering from shock. A transfusion of whole blood will help. I, I haven't been able to find a blood donor. What? You didn't check my list? There were three or four, at least, that have Clive's rare blood type. There were three on the list. Well, surely one of them is available. But... Harriet, we've no time to lose. Two of the three quit the circus last week. The third is Sandy Moss. Sandy Moss? But he's in sick bay. He can't get a transfusion. I know, I know. What can we do? Not a prayer that we'd locate someone with that proper type in this town. They haven't even got a hospital. I've checked with the village doctor. He's got plasma, but that's all. I've got plasma, but it won't do. Where's the nearest large city? Madison. It's 50 miles away. 50 miles? I better get a call through right away. Could we drive him to Madison? Can't. Don't dare move him until I get the transfusion. Operator, this is an emergency. Put me through to the general hospital in Madison. Quickly, please. What are you going to do? It's a big hospital. They'll surely have a donor. They can rush him out here in an ambulance. Better put another blanket over him, nurse. Uh, yes, doctor. Oh, he's so pale, doctor. So pale. He's in a state of deep shock. I'll do everything I can for him. Do, do you think they can get here from Madison in time? Let's hope so, my dear. Let's hope so. Hello? General Hospital? This is Dr. Backman speaking. I want you to send an ambulance to the Clyde Beatty Center. And now, back to Clyde Beatty's adventure, Brush with Death. was racing through the night bringing a blood donor to our circus grounds. Clyde laid pale and unconscious. Only the doctor's stethoscope could detect his weak pulse. Hushed, helpless, I watched. Outside our trailer, the entire circus family huddled together in silent groups. Their prayers mingled with mine as the long minutes ticked by. His pulse is weak, Harriet. Very weak. If only the ambulance would come. It's on the way, my dear. But it's been almost two hours. Isn't there something we can do, Doctor? We've done everything possible. Why do things like this always have to happen when there aren't facilities? If we've been playing one of the largest if, cities... If, if, if... If Clyde had stayed asleep until after the performance, if I could have stopped him before he went in that arena, if the only possible blood donor hadn't easy, been... Easy, Harriet, easy. That won't help Clyde. I'm sorry. It's just... The... Oh, it is. It is a doctor. It's the ambulance. <laughs> After the transfusion, Clyde rallied immediately. His pulse grew strong and the deathly pallor left his bruised and battered body. It was possible now for him to be moved to the big hospital in Madison. I waited endless hours in the corridor outside the operating room where the doctor was. Harriet. Oh, Norman Carroll, how did you get here? I heard the flash of Clyde's accident in the radio and I hopped a plane from Chicago. Oh, Norman, I'm so glad you're here. How, how is he? How's Clyde? They've had him in the operating room for over three hours. Seems more like three years. You poor dear, you look exhausted. Can't I take you someplace where you can rest? Mm, I'd rather stay here. Well, let me get you some coffee then. No, thanks, Norman. I'm all right. Well, there's Dr. Backman. Oh, they must be finished. Norman, when'd you get here? Just now. Uh, how is he, Doc? Fair shape. Oh. We've been working on him for over three hours. Can, can I see him? He'll be wheeling him by here. Oh, he had to come now. Is he awake? Is he? He's been cracking feeble gags with us for the past hour. We didn't want to keep him under general anesthesia too long. Well, Harriet, here's your man. Oh, oh darling. I, honey. Darling. These interns finally got through practicing their homework, honey. Was it, was it a rough go, dear? Mm, not so bad. Saved a lot of time if they'd have had a sewing machine. <laughs> Am I still under the anesthetic, or did that laugh come from Norman Carroll? Oh, it's me, Clyde. How's it going, boy? They got me in stitches. <laughs> Give this guy some more ether, Doc. He thinks he's a comic. If you gentlemen have finished your floor show, maybe the nurse can get my patient to bed. All right, nurse, wheel this funny man out of here. Yes, Doctor. May I go along, Doctor? Sure, sing him a lullaby. He's got lots of sleeping to do. So long, Clyde. See you later. Yeah. Stick around, chum, and I'll give you the details on how Clyde got clogged. Right how on. about that guy? He's got more thread in him than a hooked rug, and he cracks jokes. His condition is no joke, Norman. He's far from being out of the woods yet. How bad is it, Doctor? You won't know for several days. Nero's slashed and clawed him pretty severely. 
That cat's teeth went clear through to the bone. Oh, that's awful. It's bad, but we'll do our level best to save that leg. You mean he... He may lose his leg? There's a great possibility of infection. Clyde Beatty without a leg. Oh, he'd never allow it. He may not have a choice. Why did it have to happen to a nice guy like that? They say that about people who slip in the bathtub and break their necks. But when a man gets in a cage with 40 lions and tigers and something happens to him, then it can't be classified as an accident. Yeah? Doctor, this is Nurse Brent. Sorry to disturb you, but Mr. Beatty's temperature has hit the roof. It's 107. What? Oh, I was afraid that might happen. Is it? Yes, infection. A lion's bite can be as deadly as a cobra's. I'll be right up, nurse. No, no, absolutely not. Why, be reasonable. It's amputate your leg or else. Well, then it's or else. But, darling, I'd rather have you with one leg than not have you at all. I'd rather be dead. If that infection spreads, you will be dead. I don't care. I don't care. I won't let you operate. <laughs> didn't lose his leg. He must have had the patron saint of lion trainers on his side, for somehow Clyde met the crisis and passed it. Four months later, he was still in the hospital, a weak and wan shadow of himself, but hobbling around on his own two legs. Clyde, dear. Oh, hi, honey. Oh, you've got company. Norman Carroll has come down to see you. Hello, Norman. Well, man, you look great. What in the world are they keeping you in this hospital for? My beaming personality. I keep the other patients cheerful. <laughs> well, I can't keep you in here much longer. Bet they toss you out in your ear inside a week. Uh, great. Just when I'm getting used to the place, too. He's joking, Norman. Aren't you, darling? Yeah, yeah, I'm joking. I'm funny as a crutch. Why isn't everybody laughing? Want to see me do my stiff leg dance routine? It's a riot. Could be a hit turn in the circus. Replace my wild animal leg. Now, stop talking like that, Clyde. These things take time. You have to be patient. Sorry, little mother. I forgot Clyde's got to be a man about this. Oh, Clyde. Well, what do you expect? Sweetness and light? I don't feel sweet, and I certainly don't feel light dragging around these lumps of lead I used to call legs. Look, um, i got a great idea. My car's outside, Clyde. Maybe you'd like to have me take you for a drive, huh? We could stop for lunch and uh, maybe... Thanks, Norman. I'd rather not. Oh, it'll do you good to get out of this place, see people, get a little air and sun some other time. It would be good for you, dear. Good for me. Good for me. I'm sick of doing things that are good for me. Look, you two run on and have lunch. I got a few things to do, some papers to look over. Oh, wait, Clyde. I'll stay and help you. This is something I have to handle myself. Now, go on up with Norman and enjoy yourself. All right, honey. I'll be back soon. Yeah. <clears throat> he must be getting better. <laughs> I mean, being cranky like that, that's a good sign. Be back with the circus in no time. No time at all. I, I hope so. That's what bothers him. He's worried about the circus. Come on, Harry, let's get that lunch, huh? All right. Norman, do you really think Clyde will be able to work soon again? Why, of course. There's nothing in the world could get Clyde Beatty down and keep him down. <laughs> That's what I keep telling myself, You wait but... and see. Comes time for us to go on the tour, he'll be there. Oh, Norman, what are we doing? Huh? We're kidding ourselves. Does Clyde's manager be honest with me? You know we're kidding ourselves. Oh, not at all, Harry. The only thing wrong with Clyde is he's... A... He's afraid someone might see him like he is. He can't stand the idea that... Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We, we are kidding ourselves, Harriet. <laughs> oh, there, there, my dear. It'll be all right. Oh, it won't be all right. And you don't think so either. We're both afraid Clyde is through. And worst of all, he's afraid of it too. <laughs> During the following weeks, Clyde fought with all his brave heart to combat the fearful psychological reactions that naturally followed the ordeal he had gone through. Courageously, he battled against the depression that overwhelmed him. He won through, and in the late spring, he was able to join us at our Florida winter quarters. Most of the circus folks had arrived for final rehearsals in preparation for the summer tour, 
They greeted Clyde like a returning monarch. Hi, hello. Good to see you, Sandy. Oh, oh, well, darling, oh, how does oh, it feel to be oh, back with your friend? Wonderful, just wonderful. This is quite a greeting. Hey, Mr. Oh, Beatty, we're sure glad to have you back. Hey, you look fit as a fiddle. Well, thanks, Hank. I'm feeling fine. Well, we was afraid you wouldn't make it in time for the tour. Why, Hank, you know it'd take more than a few cat scratches to keep me away from the season's opening. <laughs> I know, yeah. I backed it up with hard cash. I'd give five to one odds. Ah, so that's why you're glad to see me. You won yourself some dough, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> no, boss, I'd have give up a season's salary just to see you back working your cat. The cats, huh? Well, uh, how are they? Oh, fat and sassy and spoiling for a fight. Good. I, I'm anxious to start getting the act in shape. I, I've been looking forward to getting back in the big cage. <laughs> Mr. Beatty, you want to work them out this morning? Yeah, Hank. Yeah, I'd, I'd better get started with them. Okay, boss. Here we go. The old routine? Yep. The old routine. Yeah. Hey, you, Caesar. Get in there, Caesar. Hide, hide. There's plenty feisty, boss. Want them just a few at a time? Turn them in in, in the regular order. Okay, it's all yours, boss. Hi, you sleeker. Back, Caesar. Back. Oh, boy, just like old times. Yeah. Here's Sultan, boss. Hand him in. Right. And the next one is Nero. Nero, hold him up. That'll be all for today. Was something wrong, boss? No, that's all for today. Oh, we haven't even got started. I said that's all for today. Yes, sir, yes, Mr. Beatty. Another nightmare. No, no, you guys are all wet. Mr. Beatty never let us down. I tell you, when the show's ready to open, he'll be out there with his axe. Mr. Beatty! Oh, we, we, we didn't see you standing there, boss. Gee, I... Never mind. I, well, it seems you men think this circus will fold, huh? Oh, no, we didn't mean that. Hank, well, we got work to do. Yeah? Get those cats ready to perform. Yes, sir, boss. And Hank. Yeah, boss? The first cat I want in that arena is Nero. Clyde, I've never seen anything like it. You certainly settled your score with Nero. Yeah, but more important, honey, I settled something with myself. Once again, here is Clyde Beatty with a word about our next show. Deep in the jungles of northern Rhodesia lives a fabulous tribe of gigantic natives, the Wambasi. They're extremely savage and keep all other natives away from their country because they wish to maintain the strain that sets them apart from all other tribes. You see, the Wambasi are over seven feet tall. In our next story, Land of the Giants, Harriet and I will tell you an exciting adventure that occurred when we were captured by the Wambasi. <laughs> All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. 
Rush with Death was written by Robert T. Smith and Frank Hart Pousey. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production.